Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Hello, you're listening to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Claire. And this week we're talking about getting tenure, part one, because there will be many parts to this. Uh, but first, Ruth, how was your week? So my week was okay. And this week, as I think I mentioned before, I'm trying to work on boundaries oh, yes. and having good boundaries with just focusing on what I need to focus on and not getting derailed. And it's, it was really interesting this week to notice that I always think that my time getting gobbled up is the fault of other people but it's me it's me me mm. me who is like i have serious fomo like fear of missing out on things and i genuinely get like oh that does sound interesting and maybe but i've noticed this week and stop myself great you don't have what time for this and so that was good progress but it was kind of interesting to recognize my own role in enmeshing myself in stuff that i do not need to be doing that's great yes good do you have like an example thing that you said no to well so there's a club there's a couple of clubs that i do and organize and this semester for kind of both work reasons and health reasons i'm trying to take a step back but then i just find myself being like oh but then i won't get to chat to so and so and i wonder how they're doing and i wonder what the break was like like uh -huh. i just get like all you know yeah like yeah like I genuinely do I really do like love our students uh -huh. and hanging out with them so it's hard sometimes to uh -huh. realize like no I need to focus on what I need to focus on yes gosh yeah. I was just thinking about that the other day I was strolling down the hall and like didn't have anything I had to do that exact minute and then I ended up chatting with the student and then 20 minutes later I was like what did I do you know it's fine if you do that periodically but but it it adds up it does add up and it's yeah, and I'm trying to be like mindful because like that, that if someone comes and wants to talk to you for five minutes, it isn't it doesn't feel like it's the end of the world and it feels grinchy to say no, but then they all add up and just being mindful about even if you're like, Yes, I am going to take the time to do this, but right. recognizing you're doing that. And, and that not, it's a decision. Right. Yeah. And well, not just yeah. That's great. Yeah. So how about you? How was your week? Well, good. Um, I wanted to tell you about, you had suggested the office hour thing where I ask everybody oh. if, um, if anybody cannot make any of my office hours, let me know by the end of the week. And so I was in class. I wrote my office hours on the board. I was talking about, you know, this is me. These are my office hours. And then I was like, this is the moment where I can say that. And then I was like, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't actually want to change my office hours. See, and that's knowing that and just being conscious of that. So, yeah. I didn't say it. But then I emphasized, but, you know, I'm ready to make appointments anytime and email me all the time and blah de blah So I tried to emphasize the availability, but I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> no, I'm a, but I think that's okay. And I think I've heard of other professors doing doodle polls about their office hours. And uh -huh. then they just end up super frustrated that they set these like ridiculous times and no one shows up mm -hmm. and I don't think I don't think it always has to be you rolling over and accommodating everybody's whim yeah Do you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah so and now I've got my office hours all set so oh, that's sweet. good okay cool so our topic tenure part one you have our quote for it what is our quote <laughs> so this I, I hope this qualifies as a professor but it's Gandalf and I, I read a lot of hilarious sort of, I guess, pre-meme memes about ah. how Gandalf is like this absentee professor when you're doing your PhD. And so I've always thought of him <laughs> as being very professorial. That's great. Because then like he gets Aragorn to just look after you and he's just like this postdoc. That, and anyway, that's a whole other thing. But so it's from Gandalf talking to Elrond okay. and he says, it is not despair for despair is only for those who see the end beyond all doubt. And we do not. So that yeah, it's a, a little grim, but it's true. So we don't know that <laughs> we we're not going to get tenure. That's so true. that was my, we don't need to despair just yet. Good. Yes. We are okay. We so far. Yeah. yeah. So should we tell people context about where we are in our whole sure. tenure? Thing. Yeah. So Claire and I started together in 2016. Yeah. 
sorry, there's a question mark at the end of that. <laughs> I was like, did we? And so we're coming up to the point where we could possibly go for early tenure. And even if we don't, tenure packets will be on the horizon in the next two years. So suddenly it is forefront in my mind. Yes. And that was one of our other goals this semester was to meet regularly and talk about tenure. So this is great. This is our first tenure meeting. Yes, I love perfect. It. <laughs> um, so one of the things I've been doing that's working well um, is I have a folder. I've, I've mostly an electronic folder, but I also have a physical folder Ooh. that is the, the RTP folder, you know, and everything that comes in that relates anything to potentially getting tenure just goes right in the folder. And it's, it's really not organized. Um, but I kind of like it that way because whenever something comes in, I can just throw it in really easily. And I know that everything that I want to eventually put in my tenure file is in this electronic or this physical folder. And so, and because it's so easy to put it in, I'm definitely going to do it, you know? See, that's perfect. Because if you had this whole convoluted system, you just wouldn't have put anything right. in there. So that's awesome. Because every time we do, we, we I don't know if this is the way it is at all universities, but at our university, we have these big files that you have to do every couple of years where you put in all the research um, service and teaching stuff you've done. And every time I do one of those, I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm just going to keep up with it and it's going to be super easy. But I'm not, that's hard. That's too much work for me to keep up with. But if I just throw it in a folder, I can do that. So every time a thank you note comes in or whatever, just throw it in the folder. Well, because that's the dread, right? That you might miss something. Right. There's some little nugget that would have gotten you tenure and you didn't put it in. That was the so, difference, that one that. thank you note. <laughs> that is very cool. I like it. Yeah. And do you put things in there like physical things or would you put in there like a post-it like, remember you did blah, oh, blah, blah? sometimes both. Yeah. So okay. um, if I get, I keep talking about thank you notes because those are the like evidence that you did something sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if I get an email or physical one of those, I throw it in. But yeah, sometimes it's, oh, I don't actually have a file saying this but make sure to remember that you know you were an author on this poster or whatever okay cool. Um, so yeah Could i like it note. i think i might start such a that, that yeah too. yeah it's really easy that's the best thing just an awesome. email folder you know yeah i so what's been going well for me is my optimism that's oh good my, my great <laughs> not despairing and i think so our timeline is that whatever we do will be due next october ish uh-huh is that true? Well, or is it August? If, if it's early tenure, it would be October. If it's normal tenure, then it'd be August of the year after or something like that. I don't know. So whatever way it is, I know from the last time I put in a file for the retention uh -huh. that everything, like it's too short notice to do everything right when you come back oh, to right. school. Oh, right. Because the deadlines for all the letters and everything is right when the classes are starting. Yeah. yeah. And I ended up in a situation where like I had two people visiting my class on the same day because it was the only class available right. f before the thing was due. So Hopefully I'm, it was a good day. I know, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't because I was very nervous because there was two people watching there were two me, people, so, yeah. yeah. But I, so I'm really trying to spend time this semester being organized. Great. And one of the things I did was a spreadsheet of hours. Ah, because, really? And I don't know if wow. this is true elsewhere, but we have to quantify our service with yes. numbers of hours. And so I have started that and a very broad categories of like fall 2017, spring, blah, blah, blah. And then all of the things. Wow. And so then I'm keeping a running tally of things. That's fantastic. So, yeah. It's weird going back to try and estimate how much time you spent on totally. whatever. But yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And it feels good because it feels like a tangible, organized thing. That's fantastic. Yeah. Because yeah, estimating those hours is really challenging. It's, oh, that kind of brings me to like the things about not so well, but I'll let you go first because <laughs> I'm going to like hog the whole thing. Well, that's great that you're keeping up on the hours. I, I Last time we did the retention file, I just had to come up with them all oh yeah they, i don't know they were huge estimates it'd be I much mean, better if i was keeping track i'm saying that but like i'm going back and estimating what the hell i did right two years but at ago, least I have it no was idea, more but, recent yeah. yes true true <laughs> and you don't have to do it all at once um so yeah the thing that's not going so well for me is i don't quite understand all the things we should be doing and oh, yeah. i i say this our department is excellent about having a really uh, explicit tenure criteria mm -hmm. and I was even on the committee that revised the tenure criteria so you so know I'm, it's really I'm familiar good yeah. with that. <laughs> um, so I know that part so that's great and I know that not everyone has that so 
I, I feel very fortunate there. But there's other things, you know, rumors go around. Like oh. I've heard, oh, you've got to get uh, someone to to do a teaching evaluation and come to your class that's from a different college. And then I hear, oh, it's really important that you have letters for service and research that are from a different university. Really? But I just hear these things. It doesn't say it anywhere. And so I'm not sure if I should just say, okay, let me jump through the hoop. You know, I'll make it happen. Or if I say, well, it doesn't say it anywhere. Or should I ask? Oh, so I, those, there's all these little rumors going around that I don't know. That's so interesting because that's what happens with students too, right? There's like the rumor mill that's and true. like it's like spreads all this fear. And oh. right now I'm having so much anxiety because I'm like from another university. <laughs> I can't do that. But that's really interesting. And I wonder too, though, because again, because it's rumor mill stuff and we do have very different requirements depending on your department. Right. Like that could be true for whoever started the thing. Like they could have, but I don't think that's true. But maybe, yeah, maybe it's explicitly written in some other department's tenure criteria. That's I think possible. it'd be good to like nail down some of those yeah. fears and yeah. ask someone. In so the who know. do you think we should ask? I don't know. And then, okay, so I don't even think I understand the whole process because it's like department, college, yes. university. And so is it true that someone at the university level could have a personal belief that you should do this thing? Sorry, I'm actually not helping and I'm just feeding your fear. I'm like, <laughs> Another <if>? rumor. Oh, <laughs> no. Like, is it? Or, but I feel like the people in our department would advocate strongly for this is what it says on the paper. I think so. So this is what needs to happen. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it's some the rumors that I've heard and uh, see it, it suggests that it's more like you know the college level committee, depending on who's on it, but at some points might have favored. They might have felt like letters from further afield were more valuable for some reason, and so even though it doesn't say that anywhere, that was just like the culture on that committee. So who knows? But the committee changes over, of course. So I'm not sure, but we could ask someone who has recently been on the committee, maybe. Right. Or, Um, or someone who went up recently. That's a good idea. They would have, but my feeling is, and again, is that once your department really supports you, it's going to happen. It does seem to be how it goes. I hope so. But you're right. The rumor thing, Maybe we just need to have a policy of asking people and putting it to bed. Yeah. And like you could even tell me one and I can ask my department and Good other idea. people. And then Vice versa. we can average the answer. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yes. Like, ask both. That's a yeah. great idea. Average the answer. But it is so, it is such a mysterious process. It's very mysterious. And there isn't, even though there is these, like you said, like solid criteria, it is the rumor stuff mm-hmm. that's rough. Yeah. Because one thing I read was like, you give a talk at a conference, but you need a letter from someone who is there. Oh, really? You can't just have the conference program or whatever. Right, but like, I don't know people. and I didn't know. Anyway. You yeah. didn't get a letter. Did they remember? It was probably two years ago. Right. And it was like eight minutes out of all these talks. And yeah, it's, yeah. Hmm, maybe yeah. you could get a letter from whoever chaired the session or something. Oh, okay. Because they would at least remember that you hadn't bailed on the session, probably. <laughs> just like, as long as you're in the program, then <laughs> that's why we just signed up for all these conferences and never show up. But um, yes, okay, good. But I like that. But it is, it's the, f- the fear. And we are all like these chattering students telling each other. It's like, true. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's funny. I hadn't thought of that analogy. That's weird. Yeah. So can I tell you my yeah. not so well... I find like the awkwardness of everything to do with this process. Ah. So like asking people for letters Mm. and it all feels really like mercenary. Like I'm suddenly only evaluating things in terms of where can I put this in my file? Right. Do you know what I mean? And it feels like a student a couple of years ago wrote me a very personal card saying thank you for something. And for, I was like, I can't put this in my file. Like, this is like really <laughs> Can personal. You write me another one? I know. Like, could you write like a, a more? But yeah, it just feels awkward and weird to sort of. And I know it's the process, and people know that. But it's just yeah. And I guess I'm, I'm just hogging it and doing two not so well things. I don't know. There's so many things that it's not clear to me whether it's service or scholarship oh. or I and like what what counts as service. 
So yeah. Like, is writing letters of recommendation, is that a thing that you could put on there? I see. Is that just part of the job? But Although feels there's not like... really a job description, but it does feel like it's just part of the job, but it is also service. Because I like, get some people say <clears throat> going to department meetings is service. Mm-hmm. But is that, that feels like that's just part of it. Like it's just yeah. so many things yeah. that are like really, because I didn't even really, I looked at something the actual criteria and it says going to graduation is service Hmm. but I had no idea I know I think in our department specific ones we have some of those things where we say this is just minimum essential requirements and I I think I can't remember committee meetings might have been one of those like you know like department meetings I mean but yeah that's a good question I mean I didn't put that I attended graduation in an early round and then the committee said well, she didn't say whether she did or didn't, but hopefully she did, and you should indicate that in the future or something oh, wow. like that. Um, so I would say put it in. You know, the, the this nice um, faculty member who just retired always told me, if the question is, should it go in my file, the answer is yes. <laughs> and so that's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm, like, worried. They're going to be like, she's so cheeky. Mm-hmm. She can't put this in. And, like, but, yeah. Like, I recently have been on this committee Uh where it's sort of like looking at some things in the math curriculum and there's another person on that committee who's at the same stage as we are Uh and I was like oh yeah because this will be service and then she was like no because this is scholarship and the other person there was like no this is teaching and I was like wait which is it and so like the work that we just did with Escala Uh what does that count as I have no idea so I would count Escala. Escala, we went to oh yes, good. do, a, I mean, I would call it a professional development teaching workshop to try okay. to improve our teaching. So I would have put that under professional development in teaching. Okay. Um, yeah. But, Got it. but it's so you, weird. Yeah, obviously, there's gray areas. Yeah. Yeah. Some things it feels like people, I don't know, everyone could call it a different thing. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to put them in two places. That seems like that'd be yeah, bad. That is so cheeky. you just kind of pick. <laughs> it's like everything is going to be just this one thing recycled. To, yeah. I'm, one time I did this mm-hmm. thing that counts for all three categories. Yeah. 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 But it's trick. It's, it's a weird business. It's definitely weird. And it works. It works to kind of keep you sort of freaked out and like, yeah. But it's like, I think. The thing I find like mercenary about it is that like, you want to do these things and you do these things. And then suddenly when I start like putting like a money, not money value, but you know what I mean? Like some value that it could go in my tenure file. It feels like I'm like, am I a terrible person? Like, am I only doing this? I don't know. It's just weird. Right. It is a weird thing. Yeah, totally. You get the, th- like, I always talk about thank you notes, but you get the thank you note and you're like, great, let me put this in my file instead of being like, how nice that this person sent me a thank you note. Like when someone was like, thank you. And you're like, actually, could, could you get could that get in writing? <laughs> <laughs> it's no use to me if it's just said, but you know, that's not true, but right. it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. That's funny. I feel like we could do 10 year files, like 150 episodes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Especially in this next year or I know. so. Yeah. But it's good. That's, I'm really glad we had that conversation though. Yeah, me it's too. Motivating I feel, and I feel better. And I love the idea of let's just figure out these rumors, you know? Yeah. We'll just go talk to people, average our answers, yeah, and yeah, no, see okay. what's up. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. And there's so many people who have gone through this process. Right. And people are really helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just because somebody else went to all this effort to get an outside letter writer or whatever and then got tenure doesn't mean you must have an outside letter writer, you know? So, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Yeah. But don't despair. No. Yeah, we're not despairing because we don't know. We don't know for sure know. that it's screwed. But yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening. This has been the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. As always, we are really interested to hear if you have any topic suggestions or any thoughts on this topic or any thoughts on celebrity professors or teachers, mentors or otherwise. Tune in next time.